I'm Michael Gold, and I'm a dermatologist in Nashville, Tennessee. I um, have a very large dermatology practice. That, that I do a bunch of general dermatology and a lot of cosmetic and aesthetic dermatology as well. There's been a lot of advances. I think we even go back a little bit further than 10 years. So I think the most important thing in my world of lasers and light sources is the, what we call the intense pulse light or the IPL. Um, this is a device that was sort of developed in the mid-1990s, but not perfected until the last 10 years. Um, this is a device that uses uh, broadband light to make things go away, red spots, brown spots, improve collagen. It's the go-to for many offices around the world now as far as rejuvenating the skin, making um, little blood vessels go away, treating age spots, um, and you know, it, people call it fit photofacials, and um, lots of different names over the years have been, have been tuned to it. I just call it intense pulse light or pulse light. Um, and people often ask me, you know, what laser do you need in your practice when you first start out? This is the most broad covers the most things. So I always think people should have this. Um, it can remove hair. We did all the original hair work back in the mid-90s. Um, so it's just a versatile machine that people should have. I think the other thing that's been technologically advanced over the last few years is this concept of fractional lasers. Um, we've had CO2 and erbium and non-ablative things and even ultrasound, but now we can fractionate all them. And depending on what you're looking to do, whether you want um, Tightening, tightening skin, making skin look better rejuvenation-wise, making acne scars get better. We have a bunch of things in the, in the fractional world. Again, ultrasound, radio frequency, non-ablative and ablative lasers. They all work wonderfully, and we keep seeing new and new generations of these things come out um, much safer, much faster, um, easier to use. Again, and even though they're easy to use, I always tell people you still need to be skilled in these things. Um, because whenever you think of something good, I always tell people I can show you a side effect from every device out there. Um, so when they, when companies come to me and say, oh, my laser doesn't cause any side effects, um, somewhere I have a picture that shows something bad with every machine. Because there's not any machine that's 100% side effect free. We'll take it to, to two or three different things. I think intense pulse light will still be around. We are, we've gotten much better in its use. We have much better cooling. We have much better um, depth into the skin, lower energies. And I think that's going to be around for a long time. Um, and then I think that some of the fractional devices will still be around. Um, we get better with how we deliver the energy into the skin with our lasers. Um, to make scars better or so forth. And I think scars are a big part of what we're going to deal with in, fraction, in the fractional world. When we talk about ultrasound and fractional, we're going to get better with tightening the skin um, in different parts of the body. So I think those, those, are, those are the main standards that people are going to see. I think the other thing is radio frequency. Um, we've gotten really good with radio frequency and as far as being able to disseminate radio frequency. Now we're going to talk about targeting radio frequency to specific targets. So why not make sweat go away? Why not target hair? Why not target certain things? We have technology out there that's really exciting and you know we'll see where it ends up in the next five to ten years. I hope nothing is extinct. I mean, my, my business is, 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 is all related to the lasers and light sources. Um, you know, I think that you look at the devices out there, um, I, I think that we are going to have to get very good at the kinds of devices we have. So will every kind of non-ablative fractional laser be around? Probably not, but one or two might. Um, those that can withstand the test of time and actually do what we think they're going to do. Um, I think that you know the vast, the, the quote-unquote vascular lasers, um, like the pulse dye laser, 
although it's been around forever and ever, you know, it may have had its best days, although we still use it every day for certain things. There will probably be other more advanced systems to deal with blood vessels. Um, so that may go away. We may see some, you know, we had we have said goodbye to the ruby lasers in dermatology, yet all of a sudden Q switch rubies, which are tattoo lasers, have made a big comeback. So you never can really just say goodbye to anything. Sometimes they just get recycled in a different way. Um, because they're, the wavelengths that we're talking about are, are very narrow. So we have to take what we have, which is where our targets are, and, and make sure those devices work so efficiently and safe. And it's the safety profile that will tell us whether they'll be around or not.